Hello there, and welcome to Art Lessons for People in a Hurry, where all of the art lessons are just 10 minutes or less. My name is Radioactive Top Bun, and I will be your friend, hopefully, guiding you through your artistic journey. The very first lesson for this series is going to be a beginner's guide on how to sketch hands. Now this intro is almost over, but if you do want to get started with the lesson, you can go ahead and skip to the 1 minute and 30 second mark. You can also click the link in the description below. Now guys, all the tips, tricks, and techniques that I will show you in this lesson and all the lessons moving forward are just how I approach my artwork and this is just what I find works for me and hopefully it does for you as well. There are a bajillion ways of approaching your art and a ton of professionals out there that can show you their process. You should try as many techniques as you can to find out what works for you. And lastly, it's shameless plug time. If you want to see my artwork, please check out my Instagram. It's at Radioactive Top Bun. I do a lot of original art and geeky fan art there, so definitely check that out. Link is going to be in the description below. Alright, it's time to get our lesson started in 3, 2, 1. What I'm drawing very lightly on my sketchbook here is the gesture of the subject. In this case, the subject is the hand. In this early stage, I map out the size of my subject and it ensures me that it fits in the page. This is also where I very loosely start to draw the general form of the hand and this helps out with proportions. Next, we will break down the figure of the hand down to its basic shapes. Numbers 1, 2, and 3, or the palm and the wrist, will always be the biggest shapes of the hand. Up next are the fingers. I'm breaking it down to the basic shapes of the phalanges or those little bones in your fingers. I'm going a little bit extra here with a step where I do a somewhat skeletal outline. The circles that you see there are where the fingers fold. The four fingers are divided into three small sections while the thumb only has two unless you count that massive chunk on the palm right there. The next step is to draw the form of the hand. I'm still always, always looking at the reference picture for the form and I'm just using the skeletal outline that I drew before more as a guideline. I'm adjusting the form based on the reference and I'm not letting the initial skeletal outline that I drew earlier limit the lines that I'm going to be doing. Once I have a decent general form of the hand, I can now add more details like the fingernails and veins. I'm also going to keep my pencil sharp and I'm going to clean up my drawing here just a little bit with a kneaded eraser. I'm a rough sketcher so this messy sketch doesn't really bother me but I know a lot of artists where a messy sketch really bothers them to the core. Again, every time my pencil touches the paper, I'm still always checking it based on that reference picture that I have here. I'm always checking the contours and the lines and the positive space versus the negative space. To put it simply, the positive space in this case is the subject which is the hand and the negative space would be the background or the area surrounding the subject. And I'm just always constantly basing every stroke that I do on the reference picture, especially that we are practicing. Here you can see me spot that the middle finger is slightly off and even at this stage, I'm still going to make the adjustments. If I wasn't checking my reference picture and I was just focusing on what's already on the paper, then the end product would be slightly off and that's not what we're trying to do here. Now with the red pencil, I'm adding all the extra details that you can add to your drawing. Once you're happy with the form and the proportions, you can add all these extra details to give it more life. The goal of this hand study is to practice the form and the proportions of the hand. Since it looks like we have pretty much achieved these goals, I can now jump in and commit to my drawing by using a black Prismacolor pencil. And that is our first hand study done in a traditional way. 
we are going to do a more complicated pose and this time we will do it in a digital form here just a heads up though before we begin your screens will go bright in three two one all right round two here with a more complicated hand pose same thing as the first hand study we are going to need a reference picture cool now we can get started again same thing with the first hand study i will start us off with a gesture drawing of the reference picture this ensures that the entire form fits in the page and this starts us off with a good foundation with proportions. Continuing with a very light, almost gesture-like drawing process here, I'm now going to move on to the forms of the fingers. I'm still very roughly just sketching it out and always just checking the reference picture. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have a completely sketched out rough form of the hand. When you've practiced enough, you can usually move on to the line work and form at this point. But since this is a beginner's guide, let's break down the basic gesture of the hand down to its basic shape like the first hand study that we did earlier. And once again, making an appearance here in our session here are the three biggest shapes in the hand when you're drawing it. It's the palm, that section of the thumb, and that wrist arm area. Next thing that I'm going to do is to section out the phalanges of each finger, starting with the thumb. When I'm making the basic shapes of each phalange, I use a shape almost like a thimble. Fingers taper, so it only makes sense that the little shapes that we do of the phalanges here taper as well. Okay, this part I'm going to show you the three different sections of each finger. This one starting us off with a pointer or index finger. Here you can see all the three sections since that finger is pointing up. The remaining three fingers, I'm going to start us off with the thimble-like shape or the first section that is closest to the thumb. But since the remaining fingers are folded or bent, the first section closest to the palm is just going to be in the background. And lastly will be that little finger. Same approach, the very first section closest to the palm is going to be in the background and all the thimble-like shape, I'm making sure that they do taper. And here's the hand with all the broken down shapes that we did to make it. Okay, now that I'm pretty happy with the form and the proportion of the hand, I'm now gonna move on to the next step, which is adding the contours of the hand. Even when I'm satisfied with how I drew my shapes and proportions, I'm still going to be consistently basing my lines and contours based on the reference picture. Again, with every line that I'm doing, I'm basing it off of the reference picture. I'm still checking the distance between the lines, how much space is in between, and the relationship of the positive versus the negative space. Even when I'm drawing each curve of the fingernail, I double check the reference picture for guidance. I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but I can't emphasize enough on the importance of checking the reference picture, especially if you're still practicing. A lot of the times what we think is very different from what we actually see. And when you're still in the beginning process of your drawing skills, if you're just still practicing, it's very important to draw what your eyes see and not draw what your brain thinks. And there you have our second hand study. One last time, I'm gonna show you our full hand drawing here with all of the basic shapes used as a foundation. All right, friends, that concludes the very first art lessons for people in a hurry. Hopefully this helped you out with your art journey. If it did, hit that like button. Subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the next lesson and let me know in the comments as to what lessons you want to see next. Don't forget, practice, 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 and a bad drawing is always better than no drawing. 
I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye now!